All right, we're going to go live in three seconds, everybody, okay? Three, two, one. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Maker Camp. Today is Theoretical Thursday. I'm Camp Director Nick Raymond, here with Maker Mara from uh, Santa Rosa, California. Today we'll be talking about polymer clay with Mark Fraunfelder from Boing Boing and um, from Make Magazine. Uh, we also have uh, Julie and Elizabeth Hootie uh, coming from Arizona, and then the junior counselors, Max Eliezer and uh, Josie Rushton. So uh, let's just uh, get started. Uh, Mark, what are we doing? What is polymer clay? And yeah, how can we use it? Yeah, so polymer clay is this really cool molding and sculpting material. And it's called polymer clay, but it's not actually clay, even though it sure does look like uh, the kind of plasticine clay you find at hobby stores. It comes in a wide variety of colors, really bright, beautiful colors. It's very easy to mold with your hands. Um, it holds detail really well, so you can press like a coin into it or some other kind of finely textured object, and it really makes a nice impression. But the cool thing that separates polymer clay apart from other clays is that you can put, pop it into a toaster oven or a regular oven at a low temperature for about 15 minutes, and it hardens and becomes a permanent, uh, very rigid, uh, object that can be used as jewelry or uh, toys or any kind of decorative uh, item and so that's what makes it really special and it's cool stuff and uh, and I'll be uh, throughout this chat showing some different examples of things that you can make with it and uh, I uh, would love to hear from other people who've had experiences with polymer clay to tell me what they use to make interesting molds and impressions out of polymer clay so that would be something great to hear Cool, and actually that's a great, uh, great reminder, Mark. Um, we are trying again today, if you have a question for us and you want to leave a post in the bottom uh, under this Hangout, go ahead and in all caps write question and feel free to type your question. And likewise, if you have an answer to one of our questions or another campus questions, just in uh, all caps write uh, answer, type in your answer, and uh, we'll have some of the MAKE staff helping us kind of um, check out those questions and comments and get back to you. So uh, Mark is starting off with a good one. What are you guys using to use uh, like tools around the house, uh, the workshop? What are you finding in those drawers uh, to build with the clay? Uh, so I'll show you uh, the, the uh, little project that I, I posted earlier. I made little uh, characters here, if you can see that little guy, um, in a variety of colors. I'll just put them down here so you can see. Um, and uh, this one, I, I put a little screw eye and turned it into a, a pendant, you can see. And so um, it, I'll, I don't know if you can see the detail very well here, but it, there's, there's little eyes and uh, a mouth and little brow ridges on the guy. And so I, I came up with this look just by playing with a few different things that I had around the house. Like I was, I had taken apart some kind of a, I think it was an old computer or something, and I, uh, I found this fan in it, and I thought, oh, this fan might be useful for something, but it actually turned out that the little connectors were 
were uh, interesting pattern, pattern making uh, objects to use, or like little stamps. And then uh, this little Lego strut turned out to be useful. And then I had this pen, and it has a, a interesting uh, cap, or, or the, the actually the opposite end has a little hole in it. Pens are really great. There's a lot of different different uh, uh, kinds of shapes you can make with various pens. So I'll show you how I made these little faces. You get a piece of polymer clay that's about the size of a grape. And you have to work with polymer clay to get it soft enough to work with. When it, when it comes in brick form, it's pretty tough. And, but just by working with it for a while, you can get it nice and soft. So here I have a little sphere that I made. And I'll just set it down here and just kind of flatten it out with the palm of my hand until it's uh, like a little more than a quarter inch thick. So you can see the, the thickness here. And so I have this little thing. And so then what I'm going to do next is take my pen and push some eyes in it. And I'm, I'm twisting the pen back and forth a little so it doesn't stick in the clay. And then uh, you can see that I've got the, the eyes in there, like that. And then it's time to give it a mouth. So I have my handy fan here. I haven't removed the wires yet. I don't know why. but So anyway, I'm going to press the, uh, actually use a smaller connector here, press the mouth in. And you don't have to press it in too far, just a little bit, just so you can make the pattern. So now he's got that kind of grimace. I don't really know if he's, he's angry or happy. It, it depends on your interpretation. OK, and then uh, I have the, uh, there you go, cool. And then uh, we've got this little strut from a Lego kit. And I just am going to put that in his, above his eyes to give him kind of a, an interesting brow, a couple of lines for that. And as you can see, it's like really easy to do. And so th that's like a very simple kind of a face. And I could imagine taking all of these and making a, a necklace out of all of them. It would be pretty cool. Almost looks like the Olympic rings right there. Um, so a couple of other things. Here's one that I made with some other pieces. Um, and uh, I actually think for the nose, I just used the end of the strut there for this little guy's nose. And uh, the eyes were a different kind of a pen cap. And the uh, connect, I, I used a different connector for the head. And then the smile was a, a bent paper clip. It turned out that uh, a really interesting pattern making thing is this coin that I got here from a, uh, a company in Berkeley called the Stupid Fun Club that started by, uh, by Will Wright. Who, he's the guy who invented SimCity. And he's got this really great company where he just makes really cool things for reality TV shows and movies and anybody who needs cool robots or something. And so on the back of the coin, it might be hard to see, but there are these uh, uh, concentric rings of little breaks in them. And uh, it spells out a secret code uh, I couldn't figure it out, but I posted it to Boing Boing, and somebody cracked the code really fast. Um, but anyway, th the cool thing about uh, this coin is that you can use it to make really great kind of ridges in it. And I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it looks kind of like a, an alien brain or something. So, so Mark, we have, uh, we have a question in okay. um, from one of the, uh, the campers. Uh, Christian's asking, what is the best brand of polymer clay? That's What's a good, good question. For? That's a really good question. I have uh, worked with two kinds, Fimo and Sculpey. Well, actually three, another one called, called Pardo, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. I, I haven't been able to really tell a difference between them. However, when I was at Maker Fair in May, I was talking to this guy who uses polymer clay to teach cell biology and make like little models of cells. And he swears by um, Fimo. He said Sculpey cracks. 
And uh, to be honest, I have had a little bit of, of some uh, cracking issues with, uh, with Sculpey. I'm trying to see if I can find an example of it. But it really is so minor that I don't mind. I, yeah. use, I typically use Sculpey 3 uh, as my modeling. Sculpey makes a bunch of different kinds, but Sculpey 3 comes in a lot of different colors and uh, uh, is relatively inexpensive. I think FEMA is probably the same price. But, you know, uh, I don't think it makes a huge difference, to be honest. Okay, and another question is, where could we buy this? I think we bought our, I think we're using Sculpey 3, and I think we bought this at the local craft store. Um, but another question on the comments is, where could you find this somewhere else? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Amazon, of course. It's okay. really easy to find on Amazon. And I, I bought some from Amazon, and then we have a great hobby shop here in Studio City where I, where I am in Los Angeles called KitCraft, and they sell, sell it there too. So... Uh, it's really, that's, that's the other thing is this is not an exotic material. It's easy to find. Any hobby store or there's tons of online sources too. So you'll have no problem finding it. Great. Uh, Julie, Elizabeth, did you use a special brand or anything special? Or did, where did you find your uh, polymer clay? And you might be on mute, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was asking him, what kind of uh, polymer clay did you use, and uh, where did you find it? You just, okay, now you're Okay, on. we got ours from Walmart, and we used the Sculpey kind. And they just came in little packages of, like, this one's for zoo animals, and this one's for dinosaurs, and that kind of stuff. Cool, cool. Um, so, Mara, what are we using in the makerspace today? Is it the Sculpey 3? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not sure because we don't have the little packages, packages anymore. Um, and we have some cool stuff that we're using okay. um, to make imprint. So these things are from the 3D printer. Oh, okay, like the MakerBot from the yeah. MakerBot. So we printed yeah, those out. Maker Very cool. Bot. Yeah, these things too. Um, and I'm going to use these on a couple of my things. I've already used... I think I already used one of them for my little face. Here. Yeah, kind of following along with Mark's like design. Little, yeah, it's yeah. like a little piggy. Cool. Very cool. Cool. And um, so, Mark, how did you actually get involved with making? What What was the first thing you ever made? You know, and what else do you do besides just working with polymer clay? Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing I probably made would be some electronics projects with my father, who is an electrical engineer. So when I was younger. He would make all sorts of cool things. We made a diode radio, um, uh, which is a, a, a little AM radio that doesn't require any electricity. It just picks up uh, uh, the, the radio waves, and you, you, you just hear them. And so we would, uh, I just remember getting alligator clips and, and connecting them to the uh, cold water pipes in the house, so it was like a giant antenna and, and wearing a little headphone to tune in to the radio stations. It was really fun. Um, and so then uh, I, after that, I, I really got into uh, making my own comic books and zines and things like that. The whole desktop publishing revolution was really exciting to me. Do-it-yourself media, so uh, made some records, uh, self-published books and things like that. And then uh, uh, when I started uh, uh, at Make, I became so interested in all the different things people were making that I really took it to the next level. So now I like to make skateboards. I still make electronics projects. I really like to make cigar box guitars and ukuleles. Um, and uh, I, I'm really getting more and more interested in the Arduino, which is a low-cost electronics prototyping platform that was designed especially for designers and artists to add interactivity to their projects is really a fun thing to do. And I think we had a uh, Maker Camp day about getting people introduced to the Arduino, which you can check out. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have a couple more coming up, actually, in the following weeks. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Mark. I think we totally got you off track. You're in the middle of explaining um, more about the, the polymer clay and uh, making the medallions. Yes. OK. So anyway, um, after you mold the, the medallion, and you get the, the, you know, the shape you want and everything like that, then you pop it into the oven. And I would say this is you know, between a quarter and a half inch thick, so that's about 20 minutes in the oven. And then when you're done, 
you can put an eye screw in, which is a, a jewelry finding that you can get at any hobby store or again go to Amazon and get those. And then this, uh, this, uh, this ball chain you can get at a, at a craft or hobby store. And then you can make a little necklace out of it. Uh, it's really easy to do. The, the thing that once you get comfortable with one color, you can move to multicolor. And so I have a couple of examples of some multicolor stuff that I made. Um, here's a little kind of a Cyclops dude. And then uh, kind of a, a lizard man that I, I can't remember. I, my daughter had some kind of a toy that it's hard to see, but he's kind of has a textured reptilian hide. And uh, then this skull was really a lot of fun to do, the skull necklace. Um, and uh, he's got, uh, so what I did was after uh, molding it, I took some acrylic paint and carefully painted inside the teeth and the nose and the eyes. And then I took a little bit of red Sculpey and made them into balls and pushed them into the eye sockets and then poked a paper clip in there so that he would have pupils. And uh, it almost looks like it's like glow in the dark, but it's not. It's just the colors I mixed some yellow and green together and got this kind of lime color that really pops. So I wanted to tell you something about using multiple colors. Oh yeah, here's one other one. Here's something else I made was a, a little miniature heart-shaped ice cream sand, Neapolitan ice cream sandwich. You can see there's strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate in a chocolate cookie. Um, when you are working with multiple colors, it's really easy to accidentally smear colors from one color of clay to another because it gets on your hands and it's hard to see or it gets on your work table and it's hard to see. So what you want to do when you're working with Sculpey is to keep a supply of what I, uh, you can do pa wet paper towels, but I find the best are, are uh, baby wipes. Get yourself a nice big cheap box of baby wipes and just every time you work with a color, wipe your hands, wipe off the surface area, and then use your next color every time you switch colors. And that will really save you a lot of grief and save you a lot of Sculpey. Here's another little guy that I made that you can see like this. And uh, so uh, there are uh, other ways to make things besides molding them directly with your hands. Would you, would you like me to explain a little bit about, about making molds? Yeah. Um, Mark, let's throw it to uh, Mara. Do you have any questions before we go on? Well, I was wondering if I wanted to make a necklace, let's say, out of this little piece I just made, uh -huh. uh, can I just attach something like um, a little screw or something? Can I stick that in the clay and then attach a string to it and then cook it? Or sure. should I cook it first and then put, try and attach something to it? Yeah, what's the order? Sure. Yeah. There, there, there are some good options. If, if you're going to use something like a, an eye screw, like this one here. Let me see if this one works better. Um, like that, you can put it in afterwards because it's a threaded screw, and you can just screw it in to the the piece, and so it can already be baked. Another thing you can do is get uh, a jewelry wire, and and with a pair of pliers bend a little loop in it and then stick the straight end into the clay before you bake it. And then when you bake it, it will bake around it. And you might even want to put like a zigzag in the wire before you stick it into the clay and then that way it will be harder to pull out. Um, so those are a couple options. Another one would be to take a, a paper clip and make a U-shape with it, uh, just a piece of a paper clip, a U-shape and stick it in to the clay so that you've got a little bit of the U sticking out of the clay and then you can like put a, a string through it. And then the other option, like I did with this, uh, this skull, was I just drilled a hole through the side of, of the skull and then uh, ran the string through it that way. So that's an, an after the fact modification. So really, the, the, you've got tons of different options for making them.
Here's one that my that my nine year old made a little heart. Oh. And, and very cool. It's got the uh, it's got the eye screw and then it's got a, a jump ring also, which is another uh, just a ring with a a, a a broken ring that you can bend and unbend to fit. Um, another cool thing that we haven't done yet is this is a a ring with a blank end and you can actually put a blob of Sculpey into it that's that's hasn't been cured yet and then form it with uh, some tools until you get a piece of jewelry that you like and then just pop the whole ring into the oven. Um, one other cool thing is uh, that you can you can make these things called canes and if you go on YouTube and type in polymer clay cane it will show you how to make miniature like these are orange slices that didn't really it, it, it's, it takes some practice to make these things. I've made some orange canes and then a little a lemon too. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we're dealing with a little tiny webcam, it, situ or we're dealing with little pieces in a webcam with not very great resolution, so you can't see the detail. But anyway, the idea of canes is really cool. You can make like a, you take a piece of polymer clay, like a, a disc, a large disc, and just make the shape you want in that and then you just kind of slowly smoosh it together and then you end up rolling it until you have a long uh, basically like a cane uh, a long cylinder and you slice it and the, the pattern has been miniaturized and you can make a lot of slices and uh, get some really cool effects from it that way. So uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, using is making molds with uh, polymer clay. So here's here's a cool example. My daughter found this little gumball toy. It was like this little skull novelty, probably like 25 cents in a machine. And we brought it home and we thought it would be fun to make copies of that. So what we did was uh, got this silicone molding compound. It's like a two-part compound. It comes in two jars and you mix it together and then you have about three minutes to press it, something into it. So we press the skull into it and then after 15 minutes or so you just pop it out and you have a, a mold and you can make casts of it with polymer clay. And so I had some silver polymer clay and we pushed it in there and then when it cured, now we have this kind of like silver skull that looks very much Super like... Cool. Yeah, very much like the other one, except it's silver. And and uh, I could drill. I I still need to drill the hole out there, but you could easily make a jewelry with that and make copies. And so we've made copies of of all sorts of things. Here's a here's a fish that we made. Um, and uh, I'll I'll just show you really quickly how easy it is to do. I have some yellow clay here, and I'll push it into this skull and so mark you're not using polymer clay for the actual mold right you're using the polymer right. clay to fill the mold okay yes that is correct and so then here's the here's the skull in the clay and then i can take a just a, a hobby knife like this and cut away the part that the the uh, f mold flash as they say you can do it before or after baking sometimes after is a little better because you don't have to worry about deformation of your casting but anyway so that's a fun way to do it is to make those castings now now Nick that was an interesting question you asked about the the mold being uh, silicone or polymer clay you can actually make molds out of polymer clay because like I said it it holds its uh, holds detail very well so you could make uh, uh, something like a, uh, a a cast of a toy or, or this 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 uh, little skull and then uh, kind of uh, after after it's cured and everything spray it with a little bit of oil like uh, 
olive oil or something like that, and then push in some more polymer clay and pull it out and, and cure that. And so you can make a casting that way, or you could do something with uh, wax, make a little wax thing or soap or something like that. Okay, cool. So it is a mold making material. So now that we kind of have the molds, do you want to talk a little bit more about the baking process? Should we be using an oven or a toaster oven? Um, or should we be putting it in like a oven bag for safety? Is there anything like to consider when you're doing that? Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's generally safe stuff. What you're doing is when you put it into the when you put it into the oven, you're baking off these plasticizers, and you can smell it. It smells a little bit like a, a plasticky smell. Um, the, the danger, really, the, the main danger would be if you had it too hot. If you had it like 375 degrees and you put some of this polymer clay in there, then you'd actually be burning the PVC itself and not just the plasticizers. And then when that happens, you've got uh, uh, some toxic fumes and that will contaminate the air and the oven too. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. So if you really want to be safe and you're concerned about the odor and uh, you don't want to have to clean your toaster oven after you bake a bunch of this stuff uh, before you put some frozen waffles in there, you can get a, a uh, baking bag, like an oven bag that's made for turkey or chicken and put your polymer clay in that and then seal the bag uh, with uh, either a clip or, or the tape that's applied and then that way the uh, plasticizers will just stay inside the bag and okay. you don't have to worry about the pla uh, plastic smell. Cool. So um, Julie and Elizabeth, how did you just kind of was like, oh, whatever. We put ours in the oven, and we just kind of put it in for 15 minutes and, like, saw if it was okay, and then if it was, then we took it out, and if it wasn't, put it in for a little longer. And so now after hearing what Mark's been talking about for the baking, would you have left yours in a little bit longer, you think? Or do you think you left it in just the right amount of time? How did you, how did you tell it was done? What? I don't know. We just kind of guesstimated, I guess. I picked just it up with guessed? a hot pad and kind of tapped, and tapped it on the counter. <laughs> there we go. I mean, that's part of making, right? Just kind of experimenting. Yeah. I was afraid I was going to overbake it. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about overbaking it. Um, the, the the bigger concern is underbaking it. So uh, because if you don't burn out all the plasticizers. It won't fully cure, and you'll end up with something that uh, can can uh, break a lot easier. So, uh, what like what some people actually do is they will make a multicolored part by using one color and uh, curing it, and then adding, pulling it out of the the oven, letting it cool down, then adding sculpting on top of it another color. Like say you're making a little head, you 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 do the head, then you add the hair and sculpt the hair onto it and then you can put it back into the oven and recure it for another 15 minutes or whatever and you are not going to over cure the first piece, the head itself. So that's no problem worrying about that. The the under curing is the is a thing that that's more problematic. Okay, great. And so uh, Max and Josie, are you guys building anything or have you already uh, used polymer clay before? I know I've, I've played with it before years ago, but yeah. Um, uh, Josie finished hers first, so why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you uh, um, I made these little tiki guys. Oh, very cool. Okay. Um, there's a few of them. I like tiki's, um, and it was pretty easy to do. Uh, and they haven't been cooked yet, but they're probably only gonna go in for a little bit. I used a bunch of different little tools like a button to make um, different curves in the clay um, and a lot of different colors. All right. So what I came up with, uh, I was going to originally do one of the Easter Island statues, but it took me out wrong, so I decided to just roll with it. Ended up with this guy, 
Uh, don't know. Well, that's good, Max. That's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Wait, what is that? Is that Cheech Wizard? It's a wizard. I don't know. It's okay. Very cool. Generic cool. branded wizard. So uh, I, uh, I for the most part, did not use any tools. I just did it by hand. Um, so it's kind of and the results are kind of hand-fisted looking, but uh, I think it came out okay. Yeah, definitely. And did you have any issues keeping the different clays clean, like uh, Mark was talking about, or was it pretty easy to use the multiple colors? Uh, no, there's there's definitely some blue on the yellow and stuff like that, so it, it didn't come out quite right uh, uh, because I had already started building it before he he got to that part. But um, yeah, what can you do? So I, I have a handy hint that, that's useful if you want. So, so for this ice cream sandwich that I made, I really wanted to have the, the thickness of the, the cookie part and the ice cream part be uniform. I didn't want it to be at a weird angle or lumpy or anything. So some people use a pasta machine to, to roll out sheets of polymer clay of uniform thickness. But there's another way you can do it. And that is to take, uh, get like a roller of some kind. This is just a little PVC piece of tube. And then I don't have it with me right now, but just put playing cards on either side of your polymer clay. So where my hands are, you put playing cards. And so like for the cookie part, I had a thickness of, I think, 10 cards. So I had 10 playing cards on either side. And then you just roll the roller like that. And the playing cards will keep that gap there and you'll have a nice uniform piece of, of Sculpey and then you can stamp it with a cookie cutter which is what I used here and you'll have a really nice piece of, uh, of uh, a, a nice sheet that, that's consistent height across. Um, and then for the ice cream part I think I used 25 card thickness on the other side or uh, maybe 15 card actually. That doesn't look like 25. Um, and so anyway that, that's a really handy way to quickly and easily make your work look really good and not just like crazy and random, which is okay sometimes too, but if you want more control over it, that's the way to go. I must say that's brilliant. I uh, congratulate you on your ingenuity. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. I can't take credit for it because it's like all over YouTube, but I will. I, I'm happy that, uh, to share that with you. So, uh, Mara, how are things going over here? How have we made progress? Uh, uh, let's see. I made two little eyeballs. Very cool. And I made... No, I, I feel like I've been making a lot of eyes. I thought this kind of looked like an eye. This That's is from so cool. the 3D pl printer, and I put that in here, and this kind of... This looks oh, like cool eyelashes shape. and maybe like a, some of part That's of your great. eye. What color, what color Sculpey is that? Is it, this is the silver color. This okay. is a silver sculpey. Yeah. Yeah. So is that kind of metallic mark? Is that like metal flakes? Yeah. Or? That's what it looks like. So I have some stuff here called Pardo, which is another type, and, and it comes in little spheres. And so uh, th this is gold colored. I think it's called uh, old gold. And it's, uh, they call it jewelry clay, but it's, it's basically polymer clay. And uh, so you, you know, that could be cool in this ring. You could make a big gold nugget or something like that, add some texture to it. Uh, or uh, this was cool. I have these, speaking of tiki's like Josie had, I have these uh, little tiki's here. And uh, we made a silicone mold of the tiki's. So let me just quickly squash one in here, show you what that'll look like. The silicone is really cool stuff. This is a very deep mold, so it's hard to get it out without deforming it a little bit. Anyway, there's the, uh, there they are. And it, it really is a great reproduction of the original. It looks exactly like it. And so you could have some nice, uh, a nice, metal tiki onk if you want it. And this one's uh, easy to cut with a craft knife because it's straight edges. But after I bake this in the oven, 
it really is uh, basically indistinguishable from the original. So, Mark, what is an onk? Oh, an onk? Uh, it's prob this probably isn't really an onk. Uh, an onk is like a, a symbol that uh, you're too young to remember, but like when I was a kid, people would wear onk necklaces in uh, kind of the post-hippie era. I don't really know. It looks kind of like an upside down uh, uh, astrological symbol or something. I probably wasn't using that word right, but anyway. No, that's cool. So now I think, uh, are we all ready for some questions from the Google Plus uh, campers? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Mark, one of the questions that we got, um, and this is from uh, Julius, is does the uh, polymer clay shrink when we bake it? A very tiny amount. I haven't noticed it, but just from what I've read, it will shrink between 1 and 2 percent. And that's just the plasticizer volume uh, get, getting removed. So you, you will hardly notice it. If you're making a, a, like a ring and it's a really tight fit, then you might want to make the ring just a tiny bit bigger than you, you want the finished size to be. Other, other than that, don't worry about it. Okay, and um, I've been noticing, I've been playing with it, I uh, made a little smiley face. Um, the feel to it is really interesting, but do we have to worry about it drying out overnight, or do we have to put it in like a Tupperware? Like, what's the proper storage, you think, to make sure you can use it long term? I think uh, after a great amount of time, the plasticizers will outgas. So you could just put it in a Ziploc bag to be safe. Okay, probably the best storage. Yeah. All right. I have a question. Uh, suppose I've got like this piece of here, and I just want to add like a little yellow dot to it. I just press it on. Is that going to stay on, or will that fall off during the baking process? Oh, that's a good. I usually try to press the stuff on a little bit, and so like here's a a little guy that I that I made, and um, I, uh, I I made those little dots, and um, pressed, they, they were tiny, tiny dots. And then when you press on them with like a, a uh, flat, something that's kind of flat and round on the end, I'm trying to think, like maybe a pencil eraser would be good. Yeah, or that uh, knife there or something. And then, and then it, you know, the, the surface area will increase a lot because you're making it flat, but then you're really ensuring good adherence between the polymer clay and the the two pieces of kinds. So in other words, mash it down as much as you can, and then they won't come off. Cool. And another question we're getting, Mark, is uh, do you think that you could use polymer clay as joints for robots, maybe to join 3D printed parts together? I think that that would be an interesting thing to try. Um, I think that this, the stuff if you need something and you're not too worried about tolerances and you're going to be drilling into it anyway, then uh, polymer clay might be a good way to go instead of 3D printing because it's going to be cheaper than the material, I imagine. And uh, I, I, would, I would recommend giving that a try. In fact, you can make one piece out of a 3D printer, make a silicone mold of it, and then just use polymer clay to make multiple pieces of it. Cool, so kind of like the mold factor. Yeah. Very cool. Um, also, another question was, kind of, do you think it's sturdy enough? Could you use it for a structural piece? That's kind of more back to the robot question. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, if you bake it is, it, is it rigid? Is it hard, or does it crumble? Is it brittle? It is, it is pretty hard. Um, let's see here. Let's, uh, I'm going to take a piece. I'm going to take one that I baked and, and break it, and, and you can see how much effort it takes, OK? So, I'm having a really hard time breaking it. Okay, so I mean, it's pretty tough, it looks like. Yeah, I'm putting it on the edge of my desk and pushing down really hard, and I'm 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 not seeing any I'm not seeing any strain whatsoever. 
Wow, so pretty tough material. It, it's very tough, yeah. You know. Um, cool. So yeah, it, it's good and hard. So how about uh, Max and Josie? How's your uh, progress coming along with your projects? Any uh, any updates? Um, we haven't really. I haven't been doing anything to it. <laughs> I don't know. They look good. Is the next step you just have to bake them essentially? Uh yeah. 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 I'm, I'm basically gonna stop messing with the wizard because he's very big. It's gonna take a long time to cook. Yeah, Mark, would you have any suggestions for Max on how to maybe uh, bake him? Should he hollow him out? I know in my ceramics class, um, they use the recommended like really thick pieces in the kiln. You kind of empty it out, make a hollow cavity, so it wouldn't explode. Um, is that the same kind of idea, or? Yeah. yeah. So I think there's a there's an enclosed air pocket inside the hat. Is that going to be a problem? Excuse me, Max. You're pretty quiet. Could you ask again? I believe there's a, an enclosed air pocket inside the hat. Is that going to be a problem? Uh, yeah, I think that could be a problem, Max. That's I, I think making it hollow is is a good thing to do if you can. Um, and so, uh, for example, like this this tiki thing, um, this is the original plastic piece, but you can see on the back it is hollow. And so, I would recommend doing the same kind of thing with your pieces. Make them hollow if you can, because First of all, you're saving material, and second of all, then you don't have to worry about air pockets in there. Cool. We're getting another question mark um, from Christian, and Christian's asking, is this toxic? Does he have to worry about touching it and washing his hands and using it? You know, just to be safe, I would, I would recommend washing your hands after. There's no reason not to. Uh, the stuff is, if you look at the stuff, it's rated non-toxic, and uh, um, I'm taking a look here at uh, this stuff. Uh, the, uh, the Toxicity International says that it's approved, um, and so uh, yeah, I, I think it's not uh, a problem. But do wash your hands when you're done with it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think we're getting another comment in actually saying from Jason, uh, no, it's not toxic, um, at least the brand we're using. So that's cool. Um, I have a question, actually. Say I wanted to, like, use this for, like, a fish tank. Would it be safe for the fish? That is a really good question. I don't know. I imagine it would be. It would be the same as having a piece of PVC pipe in, in the... Uh, Aquarium or fishbowl, but uh, I would I would I would be I I I can't comfortably say that it would be okay to do it without doing a little research on that. So before putting it in your fish tank, uh, we should look on Wikipedia or maybe on the label. But it's a good point because yeah. we we did terrariums yesterday, so it'd be kind of cool idea to uh, figure out if we could put it make a part and then put it in the terrarium. You know, yeah, two projects. So, uh, Julie, Elizabeth, did you have any uh, projects that you made that you wanted to show off using the polymer clay? I think you uh, were showing some off earlier. Yes, we yeah. had fun. Okay, we made a little cactus, a little cactus, a little doggy. Very cute. Um, an octopus. An octopus. That's awesome. And I made a little bone hair clip to put in my hair. So you put the hair clip in there before baking it, right? No, I made the bone, and then this morning I went and I took the bone and I used like some super glue and I oh, stuck okay. it in the hair clip. Cool. So I didn't want it to get like overheated and super hot and burn someone or anything like uh -huh. that. And I made a necklace with the leftover clay. That looks great. How I did you make that pattern? Um, I. I'd like to tell you I did it on purpose, but all I did was squish it all together and roll it in a ball. All and your then leftovers. All my leftovers, and then just squish it on the table. That's and great. And then, kind of like the skull that you had, I made a tiny little skull, and I used Neat. the end of a pen also. But it kind of looks like Voldemort, because I didn't get time to finish it and fill in the <laughs> face. Very cool. And then she made a little Chanel bag. Wow, that's great. 
tiny. You know, we went Very crazy. Cute. We had so much fun. Oh, good. So here's a question for the whole group. Uh, has anybody else ever sculpted anything before? Yes. Yeah? So what did you sculpt and what did you use for the material? Well, let's see. When I was younger, we used to use Sculpey clay like this. And uh, we made lots of things. I made little people. And one time I burned one of my people and she turned into a little charred cookie. Nice. And she was all black. Like all like she'd been totally burned. Like charcoal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have her still. We keep her as a, as a special keepsake. Remembrance. Very cool. Yeah. How about somebody else? It looks like we have a new guest here in the chat. This is uh, Jason Babbler. I'm the uh, creative director at Make. And uh, if anybody, uh, hey everybody, if anybody hey uh, who's ever going, Jason? Uh, desk knows that um, I do a bit of sculpting. So I think Mark, you did some really cool stuff with the skulls. Uh, can I show you what I did with uh, Sculpey? Oh my wow. God! Wow, that's <laughs> so sweet. I pretty much. I don't know if you can really see this. It's pretty big. It's from a uh, video game. Um, but it's a big, bad monster that comes out of the sand. And I pretty much did it all in Sculpey. That's um, so cool. And uh, it's pretty big. I'll post some pictures on it. Um, but it's the same philosophy where you just build it up, you bake it, um, you can carve into it. Um, for the fins, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I took a little knife after it was hardened and made little uh, scrapes and textures, and it's pretty cool. So, so Jason, let me, I, I, have a, yeah, uh -huh. I have a couple of questions. Did you use Super Sculpey for that? I used both that one and the firm. The firm mm -hmm. is, um, it's gray. Uh, mm -hmm. They put a little uh, pigment into it so that mm -hmm. you can see the shadows when you're sculpting. You can see, mm -hmm. um, you know, how it looks. Uh, the pink mm -hmm. stuff is a little more translucent, and when you're mm -hmm. sculpting under light, you don't see the textures and the flaws. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're doing some high-end sculpting. So, um, yeah, but it's a, it's a great medium to start sculpting in, period. Um, it's and, malleable. You can redo it, you know, and you can bake it if you finally uh, get to a point where you really like your sculpture, like this. What did you paint, what did you paint it with? Uh, I, uh, basically, an airbrush. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you can, what I, I think I painted the red with just a paintbrush. And then I, I did what's called a wash, where you water down paint. And you just drizzle it, and it gets in all the nooks and crannies, and makes it look uh, even more authentic, I guess. So, and then I actually uh, sprayed sprayed everything with glue, and I sprinkled sand on here. It's actually uh, sand on there, but it's oh. all hard now. So, well, well, thanks a lot for stealing the show and making the rest <laughs> of us look really bad, Jason. Sorry. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, that's super cool. Very cool, Jason. I love it. So, so Mark, yeah, that's an example of how far you can go with this stuff. It's really cool. So, uh, Jason, do you have any tips? Uh, you mentioned a couple of them, like hardening it and then sculpting it and maybe shaping it apart. But what are some more tips for sculpting using uh, this material? Um, well, it's, it, what's really fun about Sculpty is that it, it um, holds texture really well, right? So if you want to experiment with textures, um, like let's say you're, you want to... Um, sculpt something that's made of stone, um, you can go get a big rock and push it in there and you'll get that texture. Or you can roll up aluminum foil into a ball and you roll that ball of aluminum foil over Sculpty and it gives you almost a perfect rock impression. Oh, that's cool. But, yeah, that's, that's some really fun stuff that you just have to experiment. You have to look at everything in your house in a different way. Um, if, uh, you take a, uh, an onion, or excuse me, not an onion, an orange, and you roll that over it and you suddenly have a lizard skin texture. Um, the same with avocado. Um, it's got really cool textures on the outside. And then you can bake that sculpting and you can use it as what's called a texture stamp. Um, so once you roll the orange over it, you bake the sculpty, you can put that sculpty on other big things and apply that stamp. And so it's um, really fascinating stuff. Uh, it's really fun for uh, everybody, beginners, and I know a lot of pro sculptors down in Hollywood that still use it for things. Um, and the, uh, the Vaseline trick, so let's say you bake something and then you want to go back and you want to, um, especially if it's kind of smooth, you want to add more um, polymer clay to it, um, put a little thin layer of Vaseline uh, on it. Just take a little disposable paintbrush, put it on there, and the, and the new um, polymer clay 
sticks to the hard stuff a lot easier. So sometimes it'll slide around or it'll peel off. Um, that's another trick that I learned. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And uh, I know there are some comments about fumes. Um, I do a lot of sculpting. I, I don't like to bake as all that sculpty in my oven, um, especially since, um, you know, I've got kids around. I know it's rated non-toxic, but I think after, you know, especially the amount that I bake and sculpt, I, I got a dedicated toaster oven. Um, but let's say you don't have a toaster oven, go get an old pot and fill it up full of water and put your, um, put your little uh, sculpt in there and you can boil it. And when you boil it, um, uh, it turns hard, the fumes are trapped in the water, you know, and um, you get the same effect. It's, it's even safer than, than the oven. You can just go dump the water out. So. That's amazing. You can boil it. You can boil it. It takes a little longer and sometimes mm -hmm. you get this weird white film from the plasticizer that comes mm -hmm. out, but you can just paint over it or you just scrub it away without damaging your sculpt. But it just takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did this huge um, zombie monster and his, the body was so big it couldn't even fit in my toaster oven. So I uh -huh. put it hot and I went out to my um, gas grill that had a little side burner and I just boiled it for an hour. Um, of course I went through, you know, some propane, but uh, uh -huh. I did it outside and uh, I didn't have to worry about it stinking up the house or anything nice. like that. Nice. Yeah. Very, Very cool. cool. So, uh, Mark, I think if people were interested in, uh, in following up with you and asking more questions, um, how could we reach you? Is there a, a Google Plus or a Twitter handle or a website? Google yeah, YouTube? so they, uh, they can contact me uh, at Google Plus. I'm just, uh, uh, just search on uh, Mark Fraunfelder on Google Plus. And that's my account. Or you can email me at mark at makezine.com. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions or uh, help you uh, point you in the direction so you can do your own research and get an answer. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, Jason, thanks for popping in. Uh, is there a better way for people to find you as well? Are you muted, Jason? Uh, I'm muted. Uh, can't you read my lips yet? Oh yeah, not yet. Uh, so yeah, I, I left a comment um, in the um, in the field here, so you can contact me on at Jason Babler, B A B L E R, um, and I'm also on the Make staff. So if you have one of our magazines, you can contact me um, through that. So yeah. Cool. Thank you. And uh, Julie and Elizabeth, is there a better way for us to get in contact with you guys, share projects, uh, pictures, post on G+. Uh, well, I haven't gotten a Google Plus account yet. I'm slowly working on it. But Joey has one that's just, I guess, plus Joe Hootie. And she has an Etsy account. Yeah, I have an Etsy where I sell stuff. And it's Elizabeth Outfitters. So you can just find it on there. Cool, awesome, and uh, thanks uh, Josie and Max, uh, Junior Camp Counselors. Uh, we will actually be having them on in about a half an hour, so if you want to get in on the Junior Counselor Hangout, uh, go ahead and leave a comment, let us know you want to be in the Hangout, and um, we'll be having that at about 3.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time. Also, uh, thanks to Mara uh, for hanging out and uh, working with me in the Makerspace, and then uh, tomorrow we'll also be having the first field trip Friday. Uh, we're going to be having that at noon Pacific Time. So it's a little bit different than the Hangout today, uh, but it's noon. We'll be going to Ford. Uh, check us out. We'll be seeing some of their lab, talking to some of their engineers. Uh, look at the a tour of their lab research area and uh, some good things to come. So uh, thanks, everybody, for being in the Hangout, and we'll see you uh, tomorrow. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Oh.